You guys are absolutely rocking the animal team runs, and I have had a heck of a load of requests to continue. So today I'm going to be playing Pokemon Violet using only Reptile Pokemon. I have a little more choice, but a lot of them cover similar typings. With this in mind, plus a load of extra rules slapped on to make this run just a little more interesting. Could we beat this challenge? Comment down below on what your favorite reptile Pokemon is. Hit the subscribe button, ding on that notification bell. And with that said, let's get gaming. We spawn in with the nickname Lizard. A personal choice for myself knowing a good friend nicknamed Lizard. And yeah, these new contacts definitely give me the Lizard vibe. Good morning, breakfast is ready on the table. Uh, yeah, I was gonna go in the back and grab whatever nutritious bugs I can find. Unlike every single previous run where I've gone for the grass cat, this time I can finally take on the new fire type starter for a Coco. It's a fire type crocodile and there is a specific alligator I wanted to use, but I can't because it's not available. At least until it could come out in the DLC. For now, being a fire type, call him Solido and it loves its burnt berry treats just like the sponsor of today's video, Tokyo Treat and Sakurako. Tokyo Tree is a monthly pop Japanese snack subscription box that includes 20 of the latest, most exclusive, limited edition and seasonal flavors from Japan. And if you're just so hunting for Japan's most traditional and authentic cultural snacks, then you can check out the Sakurako box. Sakurako helps local Japanese partners by partnering up to share Japanese cultures and traditions that have been passed down for over 100 years. On top of that, you can claim some of the finest tableware, like this Sakura tea plate. My girlfriend and I tried these Japanese treats for the very first time. And just to show you how good they really are, I've got the boxes here. All I need is a taste tester, my girlfriend. This month's box is the arrival of Sakura. It's the cherry blossom tree and has long been revered in Japanese culture as a symbol of renewal and hope. And as much as it showcases the beauty of life, I want to get into the beauty of these treats. Shall we try these little cherry blossom flowers? One for you and one for me. On three. One, two, three. That is gorgeous. Oh. Jelly there are loads of other treats in there like the Corinto and the Sakura tea. I don't even know what these are. Are they... Warren? I don't know. There's like a certain thing I'm trying to think of. I can't tell what it is. You know what? I'm the same thing just got in mind. It's... That's different. That, that, that's already gone. And let's not forget about the Tokyo treat packs as well. Japanese ramen. Well, I know what I'm gonna have for dinner tonight. And we got peach Kit Kat. Gimme. 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 All right. Gimme. And we got peach Kit oh Kats. Oh my god, they're so cute and mini. They're adorable. Oh, they're pink. So I'm they smell like peach. Oh my god. They're like. They're like pink wafers. They're like peach wafers. They're gorgeous. Why are we so boring in the UK? Tokyo Treats Sakura Picnic Party bringing in their April boxes to celebrate the culture of Japan. And my girlfriend loves the sweet Sakura tea in this month's Sakurako Arrival of Sakura box. Every box includes a booklet, which you can use to learn more about the cultures and the recipes. And right now, you can all use my referral code on screen now. Make sure you order before the end of the month before you miss out on your opportunity to experience the Sakura season. Uh, are we going to battle or what? Well, she got her wish and well instantly lost her grass kitten when I burnt it to the ground. And even better so for myself, she gets into trouble for not leaving a lizard alone. But we move on and onward to probably the worst commute to school by far. Here's how it went. A big natural disaster occurs for us to encounter probably the most cool and well strange lizard I've seen in my life. I feed it my lunch and follow it into the cave where we get ambushed by a load of puppies. The lizard saves lizard and well, I just hope my team can get as strong as that. What do you think you're doing with him? Ah, don't worry, he's my pet now. We defeat Arvin Squirrel and roast its berries for Salido to chomp on before setting off to meet Zagoza. All this time I'm battling with two Pokemon. Already? Come on, I want some food. We arrive at the school and assist another student out with bullying. By taking down the Team Star Grunts, Nimona does give us the Terra Orb, but as mentioned, I won't be using it because lizards are cool enough the way they are. Once we're free to do whatever we wish, our quest is as follows. Become the best lizard in the region. 
find some delicious berries because our rival stole ours and chomped Team Star away. But seeing as we cannot overlevel, our first location is in Cortondo. This is home to the bug type gym leader, a typing that doesn't stand a chance against not only fire types, but reptiles. Even though KE has free Pokemon against my one croc, this will be a breeze. Although that fell short because Solido just wants to eat this olive. Eventually, we pass the gym challenge. Once we do get to go against Katie, even though we take a bit of damage, Nimble and Tarantula go down to easy embers before taking on a bear. Just because you have an antenna hat doesn't mean you're a bug. We get the burn and tank two fury cutters before taking them down with one final critical ember. And with that, our first badge is earned and we can now get our second reptile. I head further down towards the south to catch our next Pokemon, Toxel. Whereas you might see it more as a human-like monster, it's a lizard based on its Gigantamax form from Sword and Shield. It also has an amped nature, so we're calling it Brian May. I'm sorry, I just had to. With our newest member, it's time we go to the other side of the region to take on our first big challenge, Floth. But I had a plan. Although Brian's moveset isn't great, it gives us the opportunity to stall out for Salido, who is weak to rock type him. He does evolve to Crocolore, which is a big advantage before taking on the big and goofy crab. I start with Nuzzle for guaranteed paralysis before setting up with Tearful Luck, which lowers both attack stats. Once we lower it four times, we do go down to a critical rock smash. So I then send out Solido, hit hard with Mud Slap, which is not only super effective, but lowers its accuracy. With this, plus being paralyzed, we easily take it down, claiming our first Herba Mystica Sam. Oh, I haven't made any more, you know. Wait, really? I was looking forward for that. Maridon does get the speed boost ability, however, so we arrive at our next destination in a flash. We arrive in the town Artisan, where once again, this doesn't seem like a problem. Right? Well, the gym challenge wasn't, because we're supposed to be playing hide and seek with some flora, but they're still here. Right in my face. But once they lag along, we're cleared to take down the grass type gym leader, Brasius. We do have another member up our roster, but Petalil is annoying, trying to put us to sleep. Thankfully, it misses both sleep powders, and we swiftly take it down with two acids. Smolov was next and went down to some more acid, leaving only his pseudo Udo, but we haven't got a lot of HP. So when the tree grows more sunflowers on its head, it takes us down to a simple rock throw. It's all up to Solido. We outspeed with a critical ember and tank another critical rock throw before taking it down with a blaze ember, claiming our second badge. Before we go on and take our next challenge, I head north from Artisan in the search for another motor, I mean, lizard. About 10 minutes of searching through the land, I do manage to find our next squad member doing this. Yeah, don't ask me why, but we do catch it. I call our new bike Honda, and its base stats this early into the run is impressive. I head back to the West Province to take on our next Titan, being probably the biggest bird the Poldia region has to offer. I start with Nuzzle again to get guaranteed paralysis before chipping away with a couple of acids. We do go down so Honda is out next and hits hard with Thunder Fang. That bird nearly ran me over! I mean, if it makes you feel any better, my Honda nearly ran me over. We do eventually take it down with the help of Nackley and grab our second Herba Mystica. Surprisingly, I've had no issues whatsoever in this run, but it's only going to get harder. And right now, I'm not so confident with Team Star Battles. Even though Giacomo is the first, and even though he uses one Pokemon as well as his car, this will be tough. The game, however, forces you to take three Pokemon minimum though, so our matching team size rule gets bypassed for the reason alone. 2v3 should be easy, right? No, no, no! However, on the next attempt, we take out Pornar quite easily with a couple of embers, and even though we get hit with intimidation, Mud Slap reduces the car's accuracy. As it attempts to reduce our special defense, I keep switching Pokemon until I start hitting the game with some more embers. It does eventually miss when we go low, so we hit hard with a couple more Blaze Flames. When we go down, I send out Brian May to reduce its attack stats with tier 4 luck before finally sending Hon there to hit hard. Breaking swipe further reduces its attack and with the combination of missing and lowered stats, we were able to take out the car. It was a little trickier, but we got through with little trouble. 
Next, we go back to the east for our next destination for the gym challenge, La Vincia. This is home to the electric type gym and streamer Iono. But what makes this more challenging is she uses four Pokemon and I can only use three. So this will be tough. On the plus side, I can go and get some shopping done. Oh, that looks so much better. Get ready for the battle. You know the drill. <sighs> and well, what's even worse is we kept missing against Rockruff as it sets with double team. To the point it takes my whole squad out. So the gold digger she is, she takes my money, but I can actually get left alone. We proceed on to the gym challenge. For this one, we have to play hide and seek with my director and in turn put on a show for Iono to receive more subscribers. But there's a problem. Oh, okay then. Once my controllers and my team are charged up, we're ready to take on Iono. She starts with a Wattrel, so I set up Sunny Day. Spark has a 30% chance on paralyzing, but we pull through and hit hard with more embers. However, when we hit hard against Belly Bolt, its ability boosts its electric moves, meaning a second spark takes us out. Next, I send out Honda, who chips away with Break and Swipe until it falls. Luxio is out next and intimidates us, so I make the switch to Brian May to restore our attack stat, but to also plant one tearful look on before going down. Honda is back to take out Luxio with no issues, leaving Hermes Magius to terrestrialize. Without Smackdown, it has no weakness. We get hit with a charge beam and it wasn't looking good, but thankfully it misses a second beam, so one more breaking swipe luckily gives us the win. We got extremely lucky there. Wow, that's stalker vibes there. It was still going to be challenging further down the line as we're up against the hot-headed team star boss, Mela. But with another gym down, we can now get our next member of our squad. Being the fire squad boss, I settled for catching a Tootle just outside the city. And trying to be funny, I call it Turtleneck. This thing can have a dangerous physical bulk, has decent speed, and hits hard physically. Wait, is that... <gasps> It's a shiny dealing! I can't obviously use it, but I like to give shinies away in the Discord group, so I Oh, well, never mind. If you do want to join, however, the link is down below in the description. But now with our new Dreadnought, is the time we set Mela's fire out. The same thing applies. We have to take a minimum of three Pokemon in the raid before challenging Mela. She starts with Torkoal, so I send out Solido. Being the strong special hitter and Torkoal's drought, we use Yawn to get it to sleep before we take it out. This leaves only her Starmobile and eats a huge overheat, which works perfect for me. I then send out Turtleneck and avoid the Screech, so I hit hard with Rock Tomb. Having speed boost, this counters it, and we easily take it down. This was probably the easiest star battle I've had in this run. And if you thought that was easy, then the next Titan is surely going to be a breeze. This goofy worm is super bulky physically, but Salido's embers are strong enough to easily take it on. It runs through the cave, so we chase after it before finally taking it down with the help of Arvin. Although, other than making the food, I don't know why he bothered in joining the battle. Ah, don't eat me! Our next stop, however, was the water type gym in Kaskarafa, so we know who to bench. However, the leader is one spooked man and runs from our lizard presence. So we chase after him from the city to the markets and along the way battle against other trainers in the desert for one move we'll teach later on. Eventually we take on Kofi's apprentice just so we can give him his wallet. Although he gives us his money anyway so we can bid on some seaweed. We at least get to keep any leftovers. We evolve Brian May into the amped form of Toxtricity. And now our move pole increases majorly so after teaching Spark we're ready to take on the gym. He starts with his Veluza, so I send out Dreadnought to avoid the sidekick damage. A single crunch taking it out. Its ability is Strong Jaw, so it's technically an extra stab. Next is Wug Trio, so another crunch is an easy Oko. So this leaves his Terrasalized Crabominable. We fall short after two crunches, so one more spark from Brian May is enough to put the crab to rest. This earns our fourth gym badge, and I'm feeling confident for this run. But our next challenge is against Articus. He is a strong poison user, so to counter this, I have the opportunity to catch a speedy strong ground type, Sandile. I had the perfect name for a criminal crocodile. Is this the Krusty Krab? No, this is CJ. But it was a girl. So I named her Actualis and evolved her to Crocorock. Our newest member learns its first stab, Earthquake. 
But also its ability is Moxie, so it will raise its attack up for every Fallen member, so this will come in handy. Being against 4 Pokemon now, I can now bench Solido to match the team size. He starts with his Skun Tank, so I go with Brian May. This means it can only use Sucker Punch. I do get unlucky and it manages to take us out after Paralysis. So I retaliate with Turtle Neck and equalize the match. We tank Rever Rooms, Bulldoze, and I return to Sender with Stomping Tantrum. Being quad weak to ground type moves, we take it out. Muck is next and I switch to Atchalus to tank Sludge Wave and hit hard with Earthquake. We take it out, but we lost a chunk of our health and we go down to a spin out. Turtle Neck is back out and we tank another one. This means we're able to outspeed and get it down to half. It tries to raise its speed back up with Flame Charge, so one more stomping tantrum before we finally fall. Honda still outspeeds, however, so we're able to take it down with little issue. Even though we've had major problems with Atticus in the past, this has been easy. With our run doing really well so far, I push forward to Madali for our next gym challenge against Larry. He uses normal types, but luckily for us, our Soul Lido, who has been with us since the very start, evolves to Skeletage, and this Pokemon has really grown upon me recently. We also gained the Ghost Typing as well, so this should help. This challenge consists of the challenge of food, which is perfect for our singing crocodile, and he loves his fire blasted meals. Once we feed Salido with the correct menu item, we're clear to take on Larry. He starts with Kamala and tries to make us fall to sleep. So I switch to Salido and avoid the sucker punch. Then switch back to avoid another one. Another one. We're then clear to take out the koala with Razor Shell. So next is the Dunsparce. We miss twice and get paralyzed before falling to drill room. I then send out Salido, who can take it down with Torch Song, but it also raises our special attack too. So when Staraptor terrestrializes, we can take the big hits thanks to us being physically bulky, Torch Song being enough to take the bird out. I mean, if you're hungry, you can eat with my croc. Maybe sing some smooth jazz. It's time for a fruitful battle. As you know, reptiles are quiet, lazy, and very independent. So let's not. Instead, let's go and catch our next reptile. This one is quite far out and very underleveled compared to the rest of my squad. But I caught some viper named Carve from the Jungle Book before moving onward and upward to Glacido Mountain to reach our next town, Montenevira. This is home to the ghost type gym, but also where the only area where double battles occur. Luckily for myself though, I had a plan. First and foremost, our wanted croc evolves to crocodile, and I also get through the gym test quite easily. Solido putting on quite the show being a rock artist. This grabs the attention of MC Rhyme, and I might be the only person who doesn't like rap music. But regardless, we press on. I start with Atchalus and Turtleneck as Atchalus knows Shadow Claw. So once Mimikyu's disguise is up, we take it out. Followed by a jaw lock from our turtle. But here's the catch. The audience reacts to everything, so we get a stat boost. But also Moxie helps, so our attack is even higher. This means when Dead Dog in Toxtricity terrestrializes, we can take it down. Or not, never mind. Again, the audience gives Rhyme a stat boost, meaning she sweeps our entire team, giving us another loss. But on the next attempt, we take down Burnett first whilst taking down Mimikyu's disguise. Again, Moxie giving us a higher attack, so we outspeed and take Mimikyu on the second turn, followed by Jawlock on Houndstone. This leaves only her toxicity, and Discharge only hurts my turtle, meaning we are safe to knock it out with only a crunch. With that said, we have our 6th badge and YOU NEED TO GO TO CLASS! Oh boy. After serving time in detention, next was going against our first robot. This is Iron Shreds from the great crater of Poldia, but it's not very bulky to special attacks. So Solido eats a super effective knockoff and hits extremely hard with Torch Song. So we were quick to take it down. What have I missed? Well, just about everything. We enjoy our next sandwich and our lizard bike restores even more power. Now all you need is a big, fat turbo. Our next stop was at Alphanada, and along the way, I'll catch our next Pokemon. Although, I messed up the name decision and call a female Larry. But we'll come back to that later on when I realise. For now, we go through the Alphanada caves and arrive at the town to this. No way, I didn't even see you! Well, this time, I managed to catch the shiny and trade it away to one of you guys on the Discord server. Once again, Nomona wants another fight after arriving at the gym, 
However, I drew a big fat L on her forehead with little issue this time. But we also have the upper hand with this gym battle because Tulip uses psychic types once we swap our poison types. I can make you one colorful lizard. Uh, can you make me have powers to change colors? Like a chameleon? Unfortunately not, but the battle was quite easy. Achilles is up first against Farigiraf, and two crunches were enough to take it down. Next was Gardevoir, and one Shadow Claw just falls short, so a Dazzling Gleam takes us down. But I retaliate with Razor Shell from Turtleneck. Her Respafra comes out and hits hard with Psychic, but one Jaw Lock is a simple Oko, leaving only her Flawgers. We do big damage with another super effective Jaw Lock, but it's not enough, and we fall. Salido comes out though and eats one big sidekick before sending a huge shadow ball in return, which wins us the match and our seventh badge. But before we tackle our final gym, we do have one possible lizard encounter, but we need a female Salandit for its evolution. But after 20 minutes, the only female lizard we eventually encountered was its evolution, Salazzle. So we catch her instead, and after naming her Sriracha, we climb back up the mountain to the Glacido skiing slope to tackle the final gym badge. Grusha uses ice types, which a lot on my team are weak to, but as per usual, I had a plan. So by the time I used my best friend Lizard to pass the gym test, we were ready to fight. He starts with Frostmoth, and being quad weak to rock, we hit hard with Rock Slide, but we miss another one against Bertic, giving the bear a quick equalizer. I send out Sriracha to hopefully hit hard with Incinerate, but Earthquake sadly is a one shot. This isn't looking good, but Turtleneck manages to take it down with a single Razor Shell. Next was the Titan, and I try to hit as hard as I can with Jaw Lock. We do eventually take it down, but Altaria terrestrializes, and although two Jaw Locks does good damage, it eventually takes us out with Dragon Pulse. So all that remains is Salida, and we tank a big Hurricane before finishing off with Torch Song. We now have all 8 gym badges, and even though we have access to the Elite 4, we still have some further work that we need to take on. And that is the Fairy type boss. Unlike the Ice type gym, this is something we can stand strong against. With us having 3 poison types, and after some catching up on the levels, my team were ready to take Ortega on. Settling for all my poison reptiles as well as Salido who resists Fairy. He starts with a Zoom Arrow, who was an easy two-hit knockout with Brian Mate's Overdrive. Next was Wigglytuff, and after badly poisoning the rabbit, Venoshock takes it down in one. Thatchburn is up next, and after eating a couple of mud slaps, the same treatment was given. Although we miss, so I switch the car instead. We do keep switching and missing. The poison damage is too much for the dog to handle. So this leaves only the car, hitting hard with one more Venoshock before spin out takes us down. I then send out Sriracha, who can hit extremely hard with Sludge Bomb, and a second one takes it down. With little issue, I was confident for the rest of the run. With only one Star Boss remaining, I head back towards Casserole Lake to deal with our final Titan. It's rumoured it's a dragon, but really it's just one big whale. And with Brian May on our side, you can see what happened to him. We finished the big whale with little issue, but there was also a little fish wanting to seek revenge. But with the help of poison damage and Venoshock, this was very easy to deal with. And with that, we have discovered all Herba Mysticas and helping Arvin's best friend fully recover. All that remains is the final team star boss, and whereas you may think we may have a breeze of the run, but I'm going to pause right here for a second, and let me tell you that this was probably the worst 12 hours of my life. So, what actually happened? Well, Eri specializes in fighting types, and even though only a few of my squad can get hurt, she has amazing coverage. Toxicroak was easy enough being a one-shot from Agilis, but even the Moxie boost wasn't enough to deal with Persimium, and once the monkey falls from Brian May, we are to quickly fall back down when Annihilate comes onto the field, and it manages to take down my entire team after one Psychic Fangs. And trust me, when I say this, the same thing happened over and over again. With all our rapid progress coming down to this very fight, this wasn't going to be easy. No, 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 I'm done. <laughs> I take a step back, spend a long time of EB training, and getting our now nicknamed Dakota up to speed, I was praying this would work, because I have lost a lot of money at this point. This time, I start with Dakota. 
who eats a brick break and summons the sandstorm, allowing us to hit a quad effective Zed headbutt. Persimian is next and we eat the close combat before hitting another super effective headbutt. We do go down but Brian May eats one more hard hit before drain punching. Next was Lucario and I restore as much health as I possibly can with a couple of more drain punches. So when Annihilate is out we can deal damage as well as reduce its defense from close combat. This means Agilis can finally wipe the monkey out with Shadow Claw leaving only the Starmobile. We outspeed, so we set with sound attack of all moves. And after three, we go down. Salido so is next, and I keep using Torch Songs as it misses. This boosts our special attack, which really helps. It misses another high horsepower, so at long last, we beat the Starmobile and Eri. You're one tough cookie. That's because I managed to start building up with this battle. Cassiopeia causes to admit she's the big boss of Team Star and to meet her at school grounds after dark but we'll get back to that a little later. Right now, it's time to take on the Pokemon League, the best of the best trainers that Paldia has to offer. Unlike every other Elite Four, we have to conduct an interview to prove our worth. And well, let's just say Reptiles are a little dumbfounded, but we still managed to pass. So we can take on Rika, the queen of ground types. She starts with Wishkash and I send out Turtleneck. I was hoping Jaw Lock would deal more damage, but the second Jaw Lock was short, so we go down to an Earth Power. However, Honda retaliated with a simple Trailblaze. Donphan is up next, and while we hit hard with Outrage, Donphan's Earthquake hits harder and takes us down. So I send out Agilis to finish the Elephant off with Earthquake. With the help of Moxie Boosts, we were able to take down Camerupt and Dugtrio with very little problems. This leaves only her Quadzire, who terrestrializes to pure ground types, but the crystal instantly shatters with one more Earthquake. Next was Poppy and her Steel types, and once again, we had a strong type advantage. Achilles is up against Copperager, and a singular Earthquake takes it down in one. Next was Corviknight and eats a Body Press. A couple more crunches later, takes it out. Next was Bronzong, which was an easy Oko with a crunch. Magnazone has a sturdy ability, however, so it survives one crunch and a flash cannon finishes Achilles' sweep. However, Solido tanks the discharge and finishes the magnet with a torch song, leaving only her ace Tinkerton. It arousalizes to steel type and we avoid the stone edge, so one more torch song gives Poppy a fat L. But Larry is back for a rematch and is the master of flying types, so I know ground type moves won't help. Regardless, we press on. I start with Brian May against his Tropius and a Venoshock just falls short, so it sets with Sunny Day to then outspeed with Dragon Pulse, but we do take it down with Little Lysium. Oricorio is next and it confuses us. <coughs> you stupid lizard! We do manage to poison it and Venoshock is again just too short to take it down. We hit ourselves yet again but poison damage thankfully finishes it off. Next was Altaria and it quickly finishes us off, so I send Turtlenet out to retaliate with a singular Stone Edge. His Staraptor comes out and intimidates, so I get a free switch to Salido. When close combat doesn't connect, we tank a couple of Brave Birds and two Torch Songs to take it down. This leaves only Flamigo. Terrar sizes to a pure flying type and swiftly takes us out with a Brave Bird. Following that, it takes down the majority of my team, but actually thankfully outspeeds and shatters the crystal with a simple crunch. This leaves only hassle left, and I'll be honest, we're not ready. The Dragon Tamer taking care of a car with Super Fang followed by Dragon Pulse and Outspeed and Honda taking our bike down. But thankfully, Agilis retaliates with a crunch. Dragon Lich is next and crunch hits hard but Hydra Pump ends the Croc's run. So I send out Turtleneck and finish with a Jaw Lock. We are quadruple weak against Flapple, so we fall, but Salido manages to eat Dragon Rush and eat the Apple. But Haxorus really does get the best of us, and we lose to him. What's even worse is that we have to start from the very beginning, but I know a couple of more levels we will be able to overpass this challenge. So I go again. Kara is up against Noivern, dodging the Super Fang and dealing major damage with Ice Fang. A second Super Fang eventually connects, but Psychic Fangs to guarantee the knockout. Next was Dragolage and we hit another huge Psychic Fangs before going down to Dragon Pulse. I then send out Turtleneck who takes it out as before but we switch to Brian May instead to really tank against Seed Bomb. It leech seeds us but one Venoshock just falls short so one more takes it down. We're now looking much better against Haxorus but it instantly takes us down with a simple Dragon Claw. 
Honda comes out and hits extremely hard with Outrage, leaving only Baxcalibur to terrestrialize. We may hit hard with Outrage, but Glaive Rush is extremely dangerous. With that said, we finally took care of the Elite Four and can now go against the champ. I'm the champion of Paldia! Oh yeah? Well, I'm the king of reptiles, which makes me on top of the food chain. I start with my trusty Solido, who takes down Esparfra easily with a single Shadow Ball, followed by Torch Song on Avalug, as well as King Gambit. But next was the loser, so I switched to Honda, who can not only eat the liquidation, but outspeed and hit hard with Thunder Fang. We just survive after Ice Fang, but our next Thunder Fang causes it to flinch, so one more takes it down. Next is Go Goat, and we hit hard with a couple of more Outrages after a misses play rough, so down it goes. This leaves only a Glamora, who terrestrializes to Rock type and takes us out, but this lets Turtleneck to have the opportunity to knock it down easily with a single Razor Shell. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how the King of Reptiles deals with anyone underneath the food chain. But we're not done yet, as we've still got some work to do. And one of them was to come back to school to find that Clive was actually our director all this time and states he's the evil man of them all. So I start with Salido and Reflect doesn't help. It also tries to put us to sleep so I switch out between members until the Reflect wears off. Eventually taking the Gorilla out, I then switch back to Salido who can hit really hard with a quad effective Torch Song. We switch again when Poltergeist is out and avoid the Shadow Ball so an easy outrage from Honda was just short. It then burns us with Will-O-Wisp, and when we take him down, we get confused. Houndoom is next, so I switch to Agilis to tag the Dark Pulse. One Earthquake puts the dog down. The Big Mushroom is out, so we switch back to Salido, and then use Sunny Day, before finishing off with one big Blaze Torch song. I went for Sunny Day for one reason, Quack Revolt. It's a dangerous sweeper once to rustalize, but Sunny Day halves water moves. We still go down to Aqua Step, but Brian May is out, tanks Ice Spinner, and hits extremely hard with Overdrive, taking the duck down. But all that victorious music was put behind us when he admits he isn't the member of Team Star. So pathetic for a principal. We need to wait until nightfall to catch the real big boss, so we catch up with Arvin back at the lighthouse. We're in preparation to help with Toro, whose location is in the Great Crater. So we're up for the challenge. Greedon is up first, and it's a nice and easy knockout with two Torch Songs. Our plan sweep gets halted, however, when Garganical hits us with a critical stone edge. Turtleneck is next, and always takes down the rock with a razor shell, however a second one takes it down. Next is Toad Scroll, and I make the switch to Atulus. Avoid the Power Whip, and hit hard with a crunch. We're barely hanging on after a power whip that connects, so one more chomp takes it out. Moxie Boost also helps as we take down Scovillain in Ron, and Cloyster just survives one big chomp, so we go down to Icicle Spear. I retaliate with Brian May, who takes the liquidation like a champ and finishes its misery off. This only leaves Mabostiv, who knows a good move coverage, outspeeds and takes our legendary guitarist out. I send out Honda who hits hard with Outrage and avoids the play rough. We just survive after a second one, so one more takes down the dog. We need stronger poison! I mean, I got some pretty good venom off the scales. Now that Knight has fallen, we're able to catch back up in the academy to face off the big boss of Team Star. And I say big. Look at their size, all the teachers are taller. Penny is secretly the team star boss and specializes with evolutions. She starts with Umbreon, so I start with Atlas and chip away with Earthquake as it reduces my attack. We do eventually take it down, but our attack, however, was severely reduced. So when Vaporeon comes onto the field, we switch to Brian May to eat a Hydro Pump. However, it outspeeds somehow and meaning we can go down after a critical Hydro Pump. And although Honda did decent damage with Thunder Fang, Aurora Beam finishes off our bike too. So Atulus is back out to finish. Next was Leafeon and I switched to Salido. It reduces our physical attack, but one big special song takes it down with little issue. Jolteon is out next, so we tank the Thunder and we sing some more, taking out the Thunder Fox. Even though Flareon finishes our singing croc off, Turtleneck is back out and Oko's with Razor Shell, leaving only her to rassalize Sylveon. Even though it sets with more baby doll eyes, we got a critical hit on Stone Edge and take down Team Star once and for all. Well, not exactly as the director had other plans, but still, their picking days are over. 
she agrees to help Harvin and I with our suicide mission. So with one more ally, now it's time to meet with our main rival who is going all out against us, and we need to put on a big show. She starts with her Lycan Rock as per usual, but after one critical drill run, Ashley's throws a huge earthquake taking down her wolf. Next was Palmer, and even though close combat finishes us off quite easily, Carl was able to eat Double Shock and retaliate with Psychic Fangs. Next was Orphworm, so I sacrificed my Viper to send Salido back out. Tank the Earthquake and hit hard with Torch Song. Gujar is next, and expecting the wall to move, I switched to Hodna to easily tank and take the dragon out with Outrage. Next was the Dunspars, and Dragon Rush does finish us off, so I send out Turtleneck back out to hit hard with Stone Edge. It falls short, and we tank Drill Run, so one easy Razor Shell takes it down, leaving only her Meow Scarada. As usual, it rustalizes to grass, and as with Quad Week, we go down the flower trick. So I send Brian May to finish off the cat with a couple of Venom Shocks. It was close, but it does finally go down. Oh no, please don't say us upset, yeah? Reptiles are the best! So it's pretty safe to say we're the strongest in the Polia region. However, we assembled the Suicide Squad to take on our last task for Arvin and the Professor. Upon arriving in the deepest part, we find only the AI remains that wants to destroy us even after requesting to put a stop to the plans. This is the final battle in the game, so final guesses in the comments if you think we can beat Professor Toro. He starts with Iron Moth and we take a huge fiery dance, but with it being quad weak to ground, one earthquake from Angelus takes it down. Iron Hands also gets the same treatment, as well as Iron Thorns, but now was our team's biggest threat, Iron Bundle. A water pulse takes down Agilus, but Brian May was able to eat a freeze dry and Oko the robot penguin with overdrive. Iron Jugglist is next and does leave us low with a critical dark pulse, but the same overdrive treatment was given, so this leaves only his Iron Valiant, another huge threat. We go down to a quick poison jab, but I send out Salido who could hit extremely hard with Torch Song. We may have Toro defeated quite easily, but did you think I'd end the run here? This is the real final battle against Moridon. We may not be able to use our team, but there was one Pokemon who can help. Our bike companion, who has been with us since the very start of the game, our own Moridon, who we'll now call Jeff. I don't know why. Jeff finally activates his powers and goes up against the Paradise Protection Protocol. We spam loads of power gems and survive the friendship from a huge hyper beam. But after the help of the squad and the battle being scripted, we were able to rise victorious. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen, with the team of reptiles, we were able to become the very best and save the Paldia region. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure you leave a like if you enjoyed. And if you're new here, hit the subscribe button and check out my other runs. But thank you all. And as always, I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.